Lillian Emily Maud Tharm was found dead by the side of a lover's lane near Pool in Dorset on the morning of the 17th of January 1960 at 7.30am in the morning, following a night out at a dance. She was found dead in the snow at Wheeler's Lane with a stolen car nearby. She was found naked and face down in the frozen mud. On the 16th of January 1960, a night before Lillian's murder, she had gone to a territorial army dance at a drill hall on Wallis Down Road. This is the building that I believe it to be. This has been an MOD building for quite some time. It's about a mile from her home, uh, which is in Alder Road, Parkstone. Her 46-year-old husband, who often accompanied her dancing, said that he'd stayed at home to look after the child whilst Lillian went to the dance with a group of friends. Lillian had gone to the dance with a 37-year-old man that she and her husband knew, and it was thought that he was one of the last people to see her. The man was a GPO telephone engineer and a bachelor. He worked in Bournemouth and lived in Wolsey Road, Parkstone. It was heard that the police knew that in the closing minutes of the dance that a man had dropped a door key down her dress. That had obviously annoyed her and she began to walk off alone back to her flat in Alder Road. Another report referred to Lillian having left the dance in a huff after argument with friends. They said that they thought before Lillian had gone far that the driver of a stolen Morris offered her a lift which she refused and that she began to run off and the driver had pursued her and knocked her down. The police said that they thought Lillian had then agreed to sit in the car to recover, discarding her coat, stole and shoes, and that the driver or his companion then threw her clothes into the road and drove half a mile to Waterworks Road, which is what I now believe is Francis Avenue, where Lillian was stripped and her underclothing thrown from the car. The inquest, which was held on the 13th of April 1960, heard that there had been horseplay in the sergeant's mess after the dance on the 16th of January. The man that had taken Lillian to the dance said that he had danced with her four or five times. He said that after the dance ended at midnight that he and Lillian went upstairs to a private party in the sergeant's mess, where there was more drinking and that he could only vaguely remember leaving and couldn't remember the drive home. A detective superintendent agreed with the coroner in the sequence of events was that Lillian had been knocked down on Wallisdown Road and was then taken by car to Waterworks Road. The dark green Morris car was significant. Police believe Lillian had been knocked down at about 1.30am by the dark green Morris 1000 that had been stolen from Talbot Avenue in Bournemouth, which is about a mile and a half away. They were anxious to see anyone who'd saw the car, which had the registration VRU968. It was noted only the near side headlamp of the car was working, the offside one having been broken when it struck Lillian. The police later said, we believe the killer stole the car with the intention of picking up a woman, by fair means or foul. He was getting desperate when he saw Mrs. Tharn, who had been at a dance walking alone. This man must be caught. It was reported that a vital witness had come forward, but that her identity was being kept a secret. She was a young girl who had been riding a motor scooter through Wallisdown Road at around 1.30am and she said she'd seen the green Morris car. Another witness said they'd seen a car at about 2am, and whilst it's not known definitely whether it was the stolen green Morris, the police said that it could tie in with the timeline. The police appealed to anyone who saw the stolen car between 10.05pm on the Saturday the 16th of January 1960 and 2.30am the following morning to contact them. It was later reported that the police thought Lillian had not been knocked down in a hit-and-run accident, but that she had been pursued by a car driven by a drunken man, accidentally knocked down but not seriously hurt, then later stripped and murdered. The police said her killers might have been two drunken soldiers.
A week after the murder, the police set up roadblocks at midnight on the main roads approaching key points. One roadblock went up half a mile from where her body was found and all traffic was stopped between midnight and 2.30am and drivers and passengers were asked, did you pass along this road about the same time last Saturday and if so, can you help our investigation? Other roadblocks covered the house in Talbot Avenue from where the Morris car was stolen, the drill hall where Lillian had gone dancing, and the two locations where her clothing was found. During the investigation, the police extended their search to army camps within a 20-mile radius of Poole. It was reported on Thursday the 11th of January 1960 that 2,500 soldiers had been asked the question, where were you late on Saturday night uh, and early on Sunday morning, and can you account for your movements? The police appealed for a man that Lillian was seen with at the dance at the drill hall on Saturday night, describing him as 40 to 50 years old, 5 foot 8 tall, big build, round face, ruddy complexion, and wearing a brown suit and camel hair coat, or something similar design and colour. The police also appealed for a young man aged between 17 and 20 to come forward. He had been seen walking along Ringwood Road at about 2.35am on the morning of the 17th of January 1960 towards Poole. He was described as 17 to 20 years old, 5 foot 8 to 5 foot 10 tall, slight build, wearing a light-coloured Italian-style three-quarter length fawn raincoat and no hat. Lillian's inquest, which was concluded on Wednesday the 13th of April 1960, returned a verdict of murder by some person or persons unknown. The pathologist that examined her body said that she had scratches and bruises that might have been caused by her body having been dragged over gravel and added that certain other injuries could have been caused by an impact with a moving vehicle. He said the underlying cause of death was multiple injuries. It is highly likely that her death could have been accelerated by having her clothes removed on a cold night. The pathologist also said evidence does point to sexual intercourse having taken place. The police said that the sexual assault had taken place sometime after Lillian had been injured by the car. A detective superintendent agreed with the coroner in the sequence of events that Lillian had been knocked down in Wallisdown Road and then taken by car to Waterworks Road where she was stripped and then criminally assaulted before her body was abandoned in Wheeler's Lane. The police said the driver of the car was particularly callous. We have to look upon him as a possibly dangerous individual and we appeal for any information. The police said that they thought Lillian had been knocked down by the car first in Wallace Down Road and her outer clothing was scattered there and that her underwear was discarded about half a mile away. A Scotland Yard detective that summed up the police theory in four bullet points said Number one, the killer was driving a stolen car that knocked down Mrs Thumb soon after she left a dance hall at Poole Dorset at about 1.30 last Sunday morning. Number two, scientific evidence shows that Mrs Thumb was alive when she was bundled into the car, an olive green Morris 1000, after being knocked down. Number three, and while she was unconscious, Mrs Thumb was stripped and sexually assaulted. Number four, then she was dumped from the car in a lonely Wheeler's Lane pool, face down in the frozen mud on a very cold night. The car got stuck in a ditch in the lane and the killer made off on foot. The detectives added that Lillian's primary cause of death was the act of being left nude, unconscious and exposed on a cold and frosty night. It was on the 17th of January 1960 that a poor young lady was found dead on this very road, Wheeler's Lane, in Bearwood. The poor lady was found face down in the mud and there was actually snow on the ground at the time. And that young lady was Lillian Tharm. Now, Wheeler's Lane was known as a lover's lane where young couples would come along here at night and, and court. 
Again, bear in mind there was no other houses here, there was no bare wood as you know it existing. So this was open farm fields um, with just this lane that was coming from Wallace Down down to the Magna Road. And it was unsurfaced, so it wasn't used by a lot of different. Now, I don't know the exact spot where Lillian was actually found. I've had a look up and down Wheeler's Lane and I've tried to piece together the information I had. Now, I'll just have to refer to some notes because I want this to be right. So there was a stolen car and it, was, it says it run into an offside ditch and abandoned. Now, if it was traveling this way, that would have been offside, would have been over there. Now, I don't know if there was a ditch there in 1960. Um, this has changed a lot. And like I say, this road's been built up. I know there's evidence of a ditch a bit further down, um, but we're not going to know exactly. The clue was she was left amongst the bushes on the heath. So again, this I would class as the heath. So it is beyond me, but um, this is my best guess. Um, and some of the injuries were from where her body was placed, which would have been in amongst brambles, trees, etc. which I believe, again, you've got to think, none of this was here. And the last house was, well, 1200 1500 yards down that way so as an educated guess it was either here or a little bit further back and we will be walking down that way later this is the northern end of wheelers lane there's luther's garage over there i remember when they used to have actual petrol pumps there and now wheelers lane was uh, been shut off from adjoining the Magna Road. I think this was done somewhere in the, uh, in the 80s. They didn't want this done as a through road, through road or a rat run anymore. So, um, yeah, so no vehicular access going out onto the Magna Road at the northern end. But of course, the timeline that we're talking about, that was open. Um, there was access, you could go in from Wallace Down, uh, from the waterworks all the way through onto the Magna Road. So at the time of Lillian's murder, there would have been properties along this road. And then although we've got a, a ditch which runs alongside, I really don't think this is the area where Lillian was found. You would have had Although I know it was not street lit at the time, street lights came after um, with the residents in the area sort of protesting. I believe they had to actually raise money uh, to get street lights put in here because obviously they were nervous after what had happened. Um, I really don't think this was the area. It states that the body was carried and placed in bushes where Lillian um, suffered uh, more injuries from where she was put in the bushes. So I think that sort of rules out anywhere along here. Now this area of Wheeler's Lane would have been a lot more secluded. There was none of the houses Viscount Walk here. In fact, there was like a copse, a woods. I used to play in there when we were kids. So. Um, definitely would have been a lot more secluded. What I'm not sure is if there was a ditch here at the time. This has obviously been surfaced a couple of more times over the years. And I honestly can't remember if there was a ditch up this part. But um, it still begs a question with the report saying the body was taken and placed into bushes. From what I remember, there weren't too many bushes here. It was just the woods. Quite a lot of the trees got cut down when they put Viscount in. So I still don't think this is the place. 
bearing in mind you still had the big lodge house up the top. The house in front of us was replaced. It was a lovely old house there before. But there's a lodge house over the back there. You can just about see it. And that had been here for quite some time. That would have been here. Lovely uh, evening tonight. So we're coming to this left hand fork here is another part of Wheeler's Lane. Although Wheeler's Lane goes straight on, this part of Wheeler's Lane would go off. And I do remember it being a lane, unsurfaced lane. There was, there was a bungalow just to the right, just about where the houses start there. Um, that also had a way bridge because you had a quarry here. I think it was Phillips owned the quarry. And this track went all the way over to Wood Lane, I think it is. And there was a couple of properties down there as well. So, um, yeah, that was a, an unsurfaced lane. But again, I don't think that's where we're talking about. I think Paul Lillian's body was found further up here. So I'm just looking northwards because I've got the sun behind me and it's a very bright night. So this property, in my memory, um, was a lovely old property. It was knocked down, that's been rebuilt. So that one didn't exist, but there was a property there. On this side, there was a lovely, from what I remember, it was like a, a Swedish chalet and it was sort of set down in a little dip just there. Beautiful old place it was. And although Wheeler's Lane does split off into two tracks, there's another track that goes along there um, up to the old former stables up there and kennels. Again, there's a property there that would have been there at the time. Uh, along with, I believe it was poultry farm, um, which I'll just see if we can see. Uh, and I don't believe there was any ditch along that particular part of Wheeler's Lane. So although it forks off, I'm sure this is the actual part of Wheeler's Lane that uh, poor Lillian was found. Yeah, there's not a lot of, um, of what was the poultry farm. I think this was the all old stables in here. So um, I'm sure this will be going soon with all the uh, redevelopment happening in the area. Okay, this is what my interpretation of the timeline is on the night stroke early morning of Lillian's murder. The Morris was driving up Wallisdown Road. Now Wallisdown Road again wouldn't be as busy as what it is now. I've done it at night time to give you an idea of what it was like. It probably wouldn't have been as lit up as what it is now and there wouldn't have been so many vehicles on the road. There's quite a lot of industrial buildings, there's, uh, just going past there's a car dealership on the left hand side but here I believe is where Lillian would have been coming out of the dance hall. This is where I believe she was struck and then she was put into the vehicle, partially stripped and then the perpetrators then carried on going towards Knight and Heath Golf Course. You've also got to understand this uh, area has changed a bit. Um, I don't think there was even a roundabout there at the time um, this happened. Uh, certainly wouldn't be as busy and as large as what it is now. So we're just going around the roundabout and we're going towards um, Francis Avenue and then onto the golf course. Uh, on the left hand side is the waterworks. Now it was noted that it was at Waterworks Road. I haven't researched this fully but I believe this is what Francis Avenue is now. Also along this part of the road there was found a pile of clothing. Uh, I estimate that it would have been roughly here from the notes I'd read. So a pile of clothing was left along with 
a little bit, a few bits and pieces from the dance, including a pink elephant. Um, now, a pink elephant wasn't, I didn't think, was particularly relevant, apart from the fact that they knew Lillian had taken it and it was found there, but the relevance really was more of her clothes being found there. Uh, so, this is Francis Avenue. Uh, this is the road that leads to the golf course. Um, again, this would have been very dark. It's quite dark even today. Um, the street lights possibly could have been there at the time. I don't really know, but certainly there wouldn't have been the vehicles that, are, as you can see, that are parked on the side of the road there. Um, there is some older houses to the right, um, so they would have been there. And I know that there was certainly houses down by the golf course because a greenkeeper, etc., would have um, lived in there. So. We're going to move to the daytime now and um, we'll give you a better idea of what we're looking at. Well here we are back at the gates of Knighton Heath Golf Course where we were last night. Um, so the gates are open, it's sunny and what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk you through what I believe was Lillian's last journey um, in the car. Uh, it's a bit of a sombre walk but um, we need to give you the facts that uh, are available in the hope that one day uh, this, this can be solved. So we're going to walk and we're going to probably put this on a faster speed. So just to be clear, this is a public right-of-way, by the way, in fact, that goes uh, through the middle of the golf course. And if anyone was in any doubt, there's actually a sign up here. So, But back in the day, there wouldn't have been a gate back there. And I've driven a Cortina down through here when everything was opened. I do remember a time when they did actually put a gate across here, you can see the remnants of it. But obviously you're blocking a legal right of way, so that had to be removed. They could have put a open and shut gate there, as long as cyclists, horse riders, pedestrians could open and shut it okay. But um, obviously they removed it. Just so that um, you understand this, because it's been downgraded to a bridal way and it hasn't had any vehicles on this track, obviously the vegetation has encroached, but certainly in my memory, and when I first started driving, you could actually drive a car down here without any issues. Um, you can actually probably just about see the line of the track from the trees there.
and this is a trouble when uh, these don't get uh, get downgraded it's actually a manhole cover there or person hole cover sorry my pc skills are lacking somewhat but yeah i know it's difficult to believe when you're faced with this sort of narrow track here that uh, once you could get cars down but uh, believe me it was uh, it was quite uh, easy to drive down here So this is the end of the northern part of Wheeler's Lane. Now, the, uh, we've had a lot of rain and I think I may have to go and take a detour, you know. It is looking rather soggy around here. We can get across. So behind me is where we've just come from. That's the northern end of um, Wheeler's Lane from the waterworks there. There is another part of Wheeler's Lane which goes up to Camford Heath that way, but I'm pretty sure Lillian's final journey wouldn't have been that way. It could have been, but I don't think it was. I'm pretty sure it was this way. And then what we're going to do, we're gonna get onto the other part of Wheeler's Lane, which is the southern part, or what I will call the southern part. And we will then walk back to where I was um, yesterday. Again, like these gates and that were probably only put up in the 80s. It was free, you could literally drive down from where we've just been through here up to the farmhouse, kennels, stables, what, uh, whatever we call it up there. It's been a lovely place, absolutely lovely, right in the middle of the heath, um, gorgeous. But uh, I don't know if the days are numbered. Again, developers at the moment are snapping up everything they possibly can. There is actually some tumuli dotted about in this area as well. So this area has been inhabited for several thousand years that uh, we know of because of that. So going back to Lillian's last journey and what I was saying previously about the ditch. Um, now I was I was up there about 2,000 yards saying that's where I felt um, possibly her body would have um, been laid but there was a possibility it could have been down here as I mentioned there was there is evidence of ditches here but I don't know if this actually this mound here I don't think that was here um, in the early 80s from my recollection so again it's a, it's a possibility so continuing along Wheeler's Lane it was said that the uh, vehicle went into the offside ditch so that would have been on this side so somewhere between here 
and where I was yesterday, which we're going to walk back up that way anyway, is where poor Lillian's body was led, in my opinion. Like I said, we don't know it for gospel because I can't get hold of the detailed information. And I only really want the detail of information of the exact place that her body was, was actually found. Lay some flowers there, say thank you, and hopefully one day you will get justice, Lillian. But this area out here has always been a little bit swampy. You saw the water back there and it all flows down through here through the centre of Bear Wood and then out to the Stour uh, down by Longham. The other thing I'm not 100% sure is how long this fence has been up but I'm pretty sure it wasn't up since the 60s so um, it probably again wasn't here at the time of uh, her murder. I think it was primarily fenced off because of being a, a site of importance of wildlife and plants and flowers. Countford Heath, the whole of Countford Heath is quite an important site. So as you can see here, there's certainly no evidence, or well, doesn't appear to be any evidence of any ditch here. It's very open. Actually, the fence stops here. Well, it doesn't stop. Look, it's been uh, knocked over and not repaired. But uh, there doesn't appear to be any ditch there. And now we're just approaching the area that I felt is possibly the area that uh, her body was left at. But there again, there's quite a ditch there. There's a possibility. But all I'm pretty sure about is somewhere between there and along here is, is the area that uh, they led her, her body. And also, the thing to remember is, it was reported that uh, she was still alive. So the poor girl actually froze to death in the mud, face down, freezing cold. How, how callous! It wasn't enough that they sexually assaulted her, but they obviously tried to tried to kill her and then left her for dead in the freezing cold. What sort of uh, what sort of people were these? Very dangerous people, and it wouldn't surprise me that somewhere later on in their life they may possibly have you know, done some other horrific acts. It may not be murder, but you're not exactly going to be a nice family person if you're capable of doing something like that and then not coming forward and taking a rap for your horrific crimes. It's a, it's a terrible, terrible story. And a story that, like I say, I would say the majority of people here, that live here, get on with their everyday lives, probably doesn't have a clue about. Because it seems to me to have been just like brushed under the carpet. So I think this is the area that uh, I filmed that saying that this is the area that I believed where her body may have been left because I don't want to keep repeating myself but these houses weren't here so this was all open open heathland. Can you imagine building on a heath of such importance like this one? 
I was always led to believe it was either here or the New Forest. It was a toss up between the two and they opted for Camford Heath. So that big Camford Heath estate, which is over the back there, um, which I believe is quoted as one of the largest estates, certainly in Dorset, but in the south, um, could have been built in the New Forest National Park. And uh, now uh, Camford Heath is recognised as such an important um, area for certain bird life and wildlife but the uh, damage is already done. As I come to the end of this video now uh, it's about four days to go to the 64th anniversary of Lillian's death and murder. It's getting really cold, the temperature it's dropping and uh, it's, some, it's getting somewhere similar to uh, the sort of temperature that she was left for dead along this road behind me. I hope that you found this video interesting. Um, I also hope that uh, it's spreading awareness of, of Lillian, uh, but the best outcome would be that this case gets looked into again and just perhaps from the smallest of hopes of hopes that somebody uh, would actually come forward with some information that would lead to the closure of this case, which would be absolutely fantastic. But like I say, I do hope that uh, you enjoyed this. Uh, I have got plans to do a couple more like this, um, especially when the uh, weather is not so kind for motorcycling. I'm not one of those hardcore ride in the snow type people and of course the green lanes need looking after so I won't be tearing them up in the middle of uh, winter. Rather leave them to be protected so I can enjoy them in the summer. Anyway that was the story of Lillian Thumb. I hope you take something away from it and uh, until next time, thanks for watching.